Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's the 1st of September 2022. I'm Jim Hutchinson and you can call this my hostage video period. Labor Day weekend is upon us and I'm not sure if there's really much more that needs to be reported after that. I know we're at the time of transition, right? It's uh, we go from summer to fall, the, the months change, the seasons change. But the big thing, of course, is all those Fresh baits, their first year is still spent in their birth estuary. They're getting fat. They're going to be on the move pretty soon. That's what makes those front beaches so exciting get into September, October, November. So we're going to see a lot of that run. But where we are now, of course, is warm water uh, and a variety of fish to catch. If you remember what I talked about last week in last week's video forecast, do you remember? And if you remember any of it, it was better than I do because I don't remember a lick of it. Last week during the video, I was feeling pretty sick. I did the video and then went to bed for four or five days. So I'm in the midst of dealing with COVID and in my quarantine room. It's great that everybody's got a quarantine room in America now, isn't it? Well, fluke action, I could tell you, outside of anything else is the best action to enjoy and i hope to get in on it again myself this labor day weekend it is your best bet the one thing that people should keep in mind when the new jersey marine fisheries council made the decision that they did with the slot fish the one good thing that came out of that is it kept the season open later than we've typically had it so we've got in New Jersey until the end of September, September 27th, to enjoy the fluke action. But again, with those baits and the water finally normalizing, this weekend and heading into the next several weeks should be your best timing. Now, the best fluke reports I've had in the last couple of weeks were 13 pounds, 13 pounds. Well, we go back up to Belmar for 9.1. Nothing to sneeze at there. Heard from Captain Steve Spinelli aboard the Skylarker that he had Mike Patchy from Lodi. He was out on a Skylar Tuna trip, uh, the Skylar Tuna Club, and Mike caught this 9.1 pounder uh, out on Spinelli's boat last week. Again, water temperatures have finally started to normalize. Surface and bottom temperatures have come into a little bit clearer focus together. So your fluke bite has been pretty solid. All the wrecks and reef sites are producing well and yeah you can catch them out on the front beaches as well now when we speak fluke a lot of the times i talk about the biggest fluke being an ocean in monmouth county hard to dispute that much more so than atlantic and cape may county and even into delaware but what do we do have as we get into south jersey atlantic county now holds the the key to being the top money fluke in the state of new jersey how about ten thousand dollars for a single fluke that's what happened this past sunday in the new jersey sat fest miguel rios dragged in a 20 and a quarter inch fluke this was a tournament that is based on paying out a ten thousand dollar cash prize to the longest fish caught in the tournament miguel getting his photo taken there with aj max and d-man himself i understand this is going to be another tournament for the same time next year. So save that, circle it on your calendar now, the last weekend in August of 2023, NJ Satfest, $10,000 fluke tournament, which would have ended up being, right? I mentioned the presence of bait. That's what brings so much opportunity uh, this time of year and in the coming weeks. Well, some are already taking advantage of the amount of bait starting to move before the big migratory run of striped bass. Tom Tulla said he and his wife Judy found some bass fishing on the outgoing tide on the Manasquan uh, last week 
right along the mud flats. They said they were fishing with the Azori, had fished just 28 inches. But what Tom told me, they were just, they were feeding on carpets of peanut bunker coming off those flats. Keep that in mind. Reason being, Craig Wartz fished the mud hole pots using sardine chunks, found mahi to 40 inches on 20 pound fluoro last week. So all those peanuts you find in the harbor, inside the Manasquan, a quick cast net or two, and it doesn't matter where you're coming out of Jersey, it could be someplace in Cape May County, but a live well filled with peanuts is a great thing to throw some around those, the first sea buoy or some of those fish pots. See if you can turn a few mahi on right out there. An impressive cobia was sort of weighed in this week at Grumpy's Tackle. Kevin Shannon was looking to get his son in on a ray bite using chunks. Uh, it was after the store had closed when they went out fishing and they didn't find the ray, but they found what, you know, we always talk about swims with the rays and that's a cobia. So the Shannons brought in this 46 inch cobia from the surf. The store was closed, the scale was taken down and the, the, the scale, the shop was not ready to register this fish. But the young Shannon lad would not be denied his moment there in that grumpy's wall of fame right there where the scale should be. A good fish, uh, definitely a tasty one as well. Trigger fish can still be found along uh, all of the jetties and uh, inshore wrecks and snags, but also along the, uh, any of the groins too. Some areas of New Jersey still have the groins, but if you can find a good groin location or jetty rocks, you could probably give it a shot for some of those trigger fish before they the moose out of here. Um, I heard from uh, his, his brother actually sent me a note. Russell Gray was in town with family from St. Joseph, Michigan. Hand dug a few sand fleas in Avalon en route to this tasty trigger. And you've also got the, the, the kingfish, the croaker or two. Nick Konicheski let me know this week that the bonita are finally turning on a little bit. And of course, this is the time of year where you might find some permit, especially ocean and Atlantic and Cape May. Also, they say permit, the pompano. Get some pompano in the surf in some of those central and south Jersey beaches as well. Uh, again, transitional time, right? The time of year where you don't know what you're going to find. Joel Wakefield said he was just taking a dip in the South Jersey wash this past week. Found a flying fish right there in the wash. So there you go. It's always a surprise. There's no telling what you're going to find when you're fishing in the brine. Like this one, Steve Capone of Hazlitt was about, out about 20 miles out of Ab um, Atlantic Highlands fishing obviously for, for mahi over the weekend when he ended up with this surprise catch, a uh, 17 and a half inch, three and a half pound triple tail. Such a rare and unusual catch. In fact, a catch like this, you'd expect to find a quick state record of this. Uh, I think Steve and his family are looking to get a state record consideration on this. Uh, at this point, I think the good folks in the Division of Fish and Wildlife should be pretty tempered in such a response. Uh, while a triple tail is an interesting catch, I would keep this in mind. Back in September of 2019, I had consulted with the Division of Fish and Wildlife about this fish. Young Matthew uh, Machia, he caught this awesome triple tail in Little Egg Harbor. It was a 27-incher. He brought it back into uh, Andy's bait and tackle in Manahawkin, where it weighed 14, pound, uh, 14 pounds um, at Tony's bait and tackle, Andy's shop over there, Tony's bait and tackle. When I contacted the folks at the division at that point, they didn't seem very interested in having a record fish for triple tail. So I'm not exactly sure what goes into determination of what should be a state record fish or not. We'll see. Heading to the mountains this weekend? Well, it sounds like a good trip. Let's see what my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy, thinks. 
Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the weather continues to be the story out here in Pennsylvania and, and North Jersey. Uh, it's still hot, dry conditions. We are in desperate need of some rain. Get these lakes, these rivers, these streams back up to normal levels. It looks like we have a thunderstorm getting ready to roll through here in the Poconos, but it's going to take a whole lot more than that to keep things uh, going and get them filled up. Guys are still getting out and getting some fish. My good friend Jay Batcha, uh, he checked in and said, George, I got a couple of nice uh, crappie up at Goldsboro State Park, and that's always a good sign for this time of year. Other things like up in Lake Wallen Pompac, friend Will Grouper, he's out getting some stripers too. He says nothing real big, but the big girls are still yet to come. You know, it's that end of September when that water starts cooling down, those big fish start pushing back into those shallows, chasing that bait, and that's my favorite time to get into some of these big old stripers. Guys, hang in there. The better weather is coming, but for now, from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. We are the Fish Bites Nation. And this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting. Because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. I mentioned having this COVID for the last week. Doing the final touches on the September edition on Sunday. Complete blur. But I'm waiting for my copy just as you are. It should be in my mailbox today, I'm hoping. The September edition New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. We've got a false albacore on the cover because we're getting into that time of year. So make sure you look for that copy of the edition. September edition. It's got a whole lineup of all the stuff you could expect coming up in September. The various tournaments, the meetings of note. Uh, you've got the New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo out in Lakewood coming up at the end of September. Fisherman Magazine has a show. You'll find out all those details in the Fisherman Magazine. Spotlight on the late, great Phil Shorentino Sr. at the Tackle Box. We talk about those funny fish, those, uh, those, those false albacore, because we are getting into that time of year. So hopefully you're gearing up on those XO jigs and ready to throw at them, because I'm certainly looking forward to it as well. The September edition of the Fisherman Magazine, it will be out on newsstands by the time you see this video. And if you don't have a subscription, why? Join. You get the 12 monthly editions delivered to your door, plus you get the other 26 digital weekly editions, and you qualify for that Fisherman Magazine Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Go to thefisherman.com, figure out how to become a paid member of the Fisherman Magazine. We'd love to have you as a member. Also love to see you fill up that bucket list. Went to Capos last year, first time in Capos. I plan to be back. Let me explain why, or better yet, let my buddy Ben explain just how great the action is in Capos. And a healthier me, we'll see you next week. Hello guys, and welcome here to the Marina Pez Vela in Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. We got some good fishing to report down here. The yellowfin tuna bite has been wide open. For this last couple of weeks, we had some really nice yellow fins in the 30 to 50 pound range in the main. My buddies aboard the boat Swordfish caught one about 130 pound just the other day. Some really nice grade yellowfin tuna out there right now. We got some mahi mahi running. Most of them are in the smaller kind of eight to 15 pound range with a few fish up to 40 pounds as well. There's been blue marlin, sailfish, and closest to shore, roosterfish, snapper, mackerel, and jacks. Fishing's always good down here in Costa Rica, guys. Get those tickets booked and hope to see you down here soon.